She's 15. She goes ice skating with her friends. Either she was a klutz and fell, or more likely maybe someone pushed her over. So she fell really hard, broke a rib, and probably banged her head quite hard as well. That's that's not good. It's not great. The rib did not heal. And no matter what medical intervention was applied, it just wouldn't make any difference. Let's guess that there's something else going on. I don't know what you're saying. One biographer ominously declares, this was the beginning of her martyrdom. Ah, great. It's going to be great. Because obviously the way that God works is not through, you know, the Romans stringing up the wrong people or what, or or tempting you with the lions and shit like that. But the God is, God is like ice skating. This this fell over ice skating, broke a rib. You're fucked, mate. (laughs) I mean, holy. Yeah. All the way. I'm going to torture you into holiness. I mean, God, come on. I feel like you've ruined the story. (laughs) What the fuck? Like where, where, where is your big sky guy? Look, love you. I, I love you Catholics, but come on. Yeah. There are a lot of patron saints out there in the Catholic multiverse. Yes. A lot. Yes. One for every day of the year plus more. And some extra days of yeah, the year. Yeah, okay. okay. So your famous ones, St. Christopher, St. Peter. St. Christopher. Boats? Yep. St. Peter. Churches. St. Francis of Assisi. Dogs. A- animals. Yeah, I think animals and, yeah, and, uh, and being unbathed. <laughs> so there's also your lesser known mobs and two of these at least. I'm just going to give you a couple that are quite relevant to us. St. Bernardino, not mineral water, 15th century, he, he used to travel. Bernardino travelled all over Italy, preached to the public instead of remaining cloistered oh, yeah. and nice. keeping it all. So he was out there. He, he was, was a public understanding he of, was, of Catholicism. He was. He was getting out there. So, yeah. But apparently, even though he had a hoarse and weak voice, he became known as one of the greatest orators of his time, apparently. Yeah, you don't need a perfect voice to make a good speech. We've proven that. We do that every week. Yeah. Um, apparently he was captivating. He had creative use of language. It would draw big crowds and it led to a bit of a revival in Christianity in hey, the 15th good on century. Him. But also his fiery sermons included anti-Semitism, the oh. brutal persecution of homosexuality, the occasional uh, laming of women uh, as uh, witches. Uh, less good on him. Whatever. <laughs> to hate these people and these people too. You're bastards, you're bastards, you're bastards. But I would say this eloquently. So he yeah, became. I, I'm not quite sure about the sainthood then. No, no, he, he earned it. Patron saint of marketing, communications and PR. And, and anti-Semitism and, no, actually. and homophobia. <laughs> Patron saint of marketers. Oh, my God. Marketing comms, public relations. Ugh. Fair enough. Everyone needs one. Do they? A hundred years ago, there was like 50 jobs. Now there's infinity jobs. So there's yeah, patron saint of consultants, yeah. patron saint of- uh, Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, reverse data analysts. Ooh. By the end of this, there's going to be patron saint of the wholesome show. Really? St. Lawrence in Lawrence's day. St. Larry. Loza. Uh, Christian leaders were ordered, once they were told they were going to be executed, they had to turn over all their riches to the church. Oh, yes. It was not uncommon. So the Romans would say, we're going to yeah, fucking yeah. kill you. So the church would say, well, give us all the riches before we, they get killed. Yeah. So the prefect of Rome ordered Lawrence to do this. And he said, can I just have three days to get all the church's goods together? Yeah, to I'm, I'm, d- to I'm due diligence. I'm getting I'm all. into it. Yeah, yeah, I want to do it really well. Yeah, yeah. Give, yeah. I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to stiff you. So in that three days, he distributed his riches among the poor. Then he presented the city's poor as the treasures of the church. Oh. He also put up uh, widows and consecrated virgins as the true crown in the, the jewel of the uh, okay, okay, church. Okay, okay, buddy. All right. Fair enough. This, this uh, made the prefect peeved. <laughs> so he said- Our true crown is our virgins. Yeah. It's like, are these the riches? Oh, the poor people. <laughs> to which he replied, cook the fucker. Sure. Cook him over a gridiron. Mm. So St. Lawrence apparently, having been put on the gridiron, allegedly exclaimed after quite some time, I'm done on this side, turn me over. <laughs> so he became the saint of cooks, chefs, and comedians. No, that's not – well, okay, cooks, yes. Cooks, chefs, comedians. Comedians I get, but cooks and chefs, that's uh, – By being cooked. Yeah, not great. He really cared about like the Like if, if he had fed a lot of the people, yeah, fine. He may have, I don't know. Afterwards? Mm-hmm. These saints are pretty specific. Yes. I'm wondering if you've heard of St. Lidwinia of Shedum. <laughs> she is, among other things, which we'll get to, the patron saint of ice skating. Welcome to The Wholesome Show, the science podcast that fully expects to be canonised for its gushing devotion to the whole of science. We really do. I, 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 I don't expect. Don't you? I do now. Having read this... Having learnt uh, about this. I'm Will Grant. I'm St. Rod Lambert. St. Lidwina, or Lidvine, Lidvid, Lidvud, Lidwina, 
None of them are great. Are you going to get to a good one? Edwina will do. She was born in Scheidum in Holland in 1380. She was a fifth child of nine and she was the only girl. So her mother apparently was at a Palm Sunday mass in the local church. It's a very religious moment, you know, the whole Easter business or warming up. Suddenly she got rushed home to give oh. birth to Lidwina and the passion was being sung. So one oh. of those kind of, you know, Jesus is Why dying. Why you stay in the church? Up. Like, Well, because she had to have the baby and it would be disrespectful to get the, the, the ooze on the floor of the church. Yeah, but but it'd be like religious and stuff. Like that's God saying. Oh, it would be, That's yeah. God saying yeah. now's your time. Do it, do it here. There's an altar up there. She had to go home to have the baby while the passion was being sung, which is, you know, deeply yeah, the passion of the Christ. Yeah. And that's pretty horrifying. She's got, she's got her hymns up. Yeah, she's but also it's like they're talking about yicky stuff. And uh, one of the sources says, this was an omen of the suffering Lidwina was to endure. Oh, great. Yeah. Cool. It's great. Cool. It's great. You know, it's that thing that uh, uh, time machines. Yeah. No one, <laughs> there are no pregnant women. That are going. You know what? You know what? If I get me a time machine, I'll go back to thirteen eighteen and, and have a baby. <laughs> baby. I want to or, see. What, I want the authentic experience. Any time, any time before now, and I'm yeah, sure any time before <laughs> yesterday. Like I, today is it. <laughs> so yeah, apparently she was even very as a child. She was drawn to the mother of God. I assume they mean Mary. By seven or eight, she was already greatly devoted to the image of Our Lady in the Church okay. of Scheidum. Mm -hmm. Apparently, she was a beautiful and intelligent girl. I mean, that's what you need for sainthood. Shit, you need to know. Oh, yeah. You want to canonize it. Is she hot? Classic. But but what era is this? Remember, this is the, this is the era of the fucking popes. Most of the eras have been the era. No, of the no, they, they, they stood out. I, I reckon Most. around then there was that there was that pope that got killed by being thrown out the window for fucking too much. Did um, we talk about that? We did. We yeah. did. I'm just saying that around yeah. then this is this is an era where they celebrated this kind of thing. So yeah, they did celebrated non celibacy. By the age of 12, many men wanted to marry her, which is great, which is great. <sighs> Fucking hell. Marry. So formal, beautiful, commitment. No. Marry. Wanted no, to. Wanted no. to. But she declared her intention to remain a virgin, as I think a 12-year-old should. Again, could we, just, could we just leave it alone? Could she just be playing with her toys? Couldn't she just I, be 12? I, I, know, I know that being 12 back in those days meant working in the salt mine. Same as being 35 Milking today. 80 cows every minute. Yeah, and having nine babies exactly. a day. Well, a day. No, no, could we leave out the having babies? Day. We can't. You cannot tell the past what to do. Yes, I bloody can. They've already done it. So anyway, she said, no, I'm, I'm going to stay a virgin. This is at 12. A couple of years later, she's 15. She goes skating, ice skating with her friends. Either she was a klutz and fell or more likely maybe someone pushed her over on the ice. So she fell really hard, broke a rib, and probably banged her head quite hard as well. Oh. Probably. But that's a little less clear. It's very clear she broke a rib on her right-hand oh, side. That's, that's no good. It's not great. The rib did not heal. Oh. And no matter what medical intervention was applied, it just wouldn't make any difference. Let's guess that there's something else going on. I don't know what you're saying. One biographer ominously declares this was the beginning of her martyrdom. Ah, uh, great. It's going to be great. Because obviously the way that God works – is not through, you know, the Romans stringing up the wrong people or what no. or or tempting you with the lions and shit like that. But no. the God is God is like ice skating. This this fell over ice skating, <laughs> broke a rib, you're fucked, mate. <laughs> I mean holy. Yeah, yeah. All the way. I'm gonna torture you into holiness. <laughs> like I mean, God, come I, on. I, I feel like you've ruined the story. <laughs> what the fuck? Like where 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 is your big sky guy? Come on. Yeah. So she became progressively paralyzed. Oh. She soon became unable to walk except without a, which needed a stick or a crutch and her body would slowly deteriorate. I'm going to do a little bit of science and say it's more than a broken rib. So from about 20, she was confined to her bed and she When did she have the accident? 15. Oh. So she was limping around on crutches oh, so and stuff. Oh, so it progressively got worse yeah. and the, yeah. the, the, the yeah. ice skating was the moment. Yeah. So yeah, from about 20, she was confined to bed and she basically remained in bed for the rest of her life. Again. No, and no, that wasn't two or three years. That was quite a few years. Uh, but paralysis- Kind of sound like the best bit. <laughs> I know. Because yeah. soon after injury, gangrene began to set in and spread, according to at least a few sources, across her entire body. When I was reading, you know, as a kid, mm. uh, spontaneous human combustion, mm -hmm, obviously mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. worst. Obviously the worst. Number one. Like just the idea that you could you could just explode. I'm just watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> gangrene, gangrene's number two. Like body rotting on you. Really? Like, <laughs> I'm thinking date cancer. No, I didn't think about that as a kid. I didn't. I did that. Did. And that's good. That means you had a good childhood. Because if you were thinking about that as a kid, no. See, I was just worried about the spontaneous human combustion and gangrene. The gangrene was setting in, spread over <laughs> entire body. 
Let's, let's bring back something more pleasant. Mm. At 16, an abscess burst and fluids, quote, came up through her mouth with the vomiting. <laughs> with the vomiting. With the vomiting. She had three large open wounds on her body and maggots began to eat her rotting flesh. Oh. <laughs> the maggots came out of the wound in her stomach and um, they put a plaster of fresh wheat and honey on it to sure. draw the maggots towards that rather to stop them feeding on her. Yeah, well, sure. Which makes sense. A little bit of brie. A chablis. <laughs> sure. The maggots will like that more. We'll pair it. We'll just put yeah, some yeah. a little ice, picnic next to you. Bit of ice cream for afters. <laughs> but apparently the smell that came off it was overall surprisingly sweet. <laughs> sweet. So that's nice. When she was about 18, her confessor, which I think just means her priest, yeah. taught her how to meditate upon the passion of Christ. Now, apparently she found this quite difficult at first. <laughs> She's three years into this ordeal. But with, quote, persevering effort, she acquired great recollection. She soon began to feel happiness in her pains, recognising in sure. them God's will and her special vocation. Yeah, okay. So she got quite quickly to a point where she ate almost nothing except for an occasional piece of apple, a little bit of bread, maybe some milk or wine, and maybe some sugar or a bit of grape. That was all she'd eat, a bit here and a bit there. When her body got to the point where she could no longer tolerate that, she drank a bit of water from the river, which is not a good idea. Yeah. And apparently, according to a number of sources, she survived on the Eucharist. The, the, the little wafer bread. A bit of sourdough and some, I don't know, Pinot Bois. Survived on the Eucharist. Also, she was completely unable to sleep for days, weeks, and maybe months, like completely not sleeping. Sleep was out. Surely she is just passing in and out of delirium. Like with this level of pain and this level of rotting of the body. Religious ecstasy. Low, low, or, or, yeah, yeah, religious ecstasy or delirium. I would imagine. So apparently there's a document from the time that was put together by town officials and it may, may still exist. A document that corroborates she ate fuck all and apparently slept pretty much zero. Okay. Also talks of how Lidwinia shed. Oh. Skin. Oh. Bones. B bones? Parts of her intestines. Bones. Some stories suggest she may have Puked some bone out. <laughs> How does a bone get in the puke passageway? Like I, I don't know. I, 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 apart from the gross out here, like like I, and I'm there just, is that. I'm there just being that, science yeah. here. Yeah. Like how? How, how do you get foot the, bones connected to the tummy bone? No. How do you suddenly pass a bone? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I get a bone falling off you if you're rotting that badly. Oh my god! But threw up a bone. <laughs> Fuck. You know, I got. I got. No, 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 know, no. Shed. Shed. Sometimes you throw up and it's it's a little bit of a throw up. Sometimes it, it you feel a, fat, a powerful purge. And, oh, and yeah. you know you know that way you, you get feel a little, the toenails coming. You get out. a little bit proud of something that's that horrific, but that amount of like if you throw up a bone, I'll be like, fuck oh, yeah, fucking I throw up a bone. That's a bit of finger. Like, I don't know how it happened. Like, I, I didn't need it. I threw up hard. Oh like, look, <laughs> you just sucking. My right pointy finger only has <laughs> one my knuckle. Lung. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she was proud. <laughs> I'm just saying you've got to take your wins. I'm you not do, you do, you do, you do. So she was shedding this stuff, skin, bones, parts for intestines. Her parents kept the off cast in a vase. Oh, God. Oh, thank you. Which would apparently give off a sweet odour. And apparently, this is the quote, these excited so much attention that Lidwina had her mother bury the bits. Mother, stop collecting my bones. People are interested in this stuff. And yeah, they, they I get want it. it. They kind of, they mother, like, I'm rotting in front of you. Could you not keep it for People seem show to like tell. the smell, which freaks me out even more. Also, she had intense headaches, toothaches, fever, and dropsy, a.k.a. generalised swelling. <laughs> One report at least suggests the dropsy might have been caused because she'd been impregnated by the local priest, but I didn't say that anywhere else. So they're saying she may have been I, I, swollen because she was impregnated. I find that unlikely, but not impossible. Uh, uh, she could hardly speak because of the cleft in her lower lip and chin. As well, she could not see out of her right eye, and her left eye was so weak that it was painful to see any light, so she often had to stay in the dark. <laughs> cool, right? But it's okay. God wanted it. Because when God slams a huge door on your nuts... It just opens a can of lemonade. He opens a tiny little crack in a window. Because he, quote, rewarded her with a wonderful gift of prayer and also with visions. Mm -hmm. So stop your whinging. Okay, visions could be fun. It's like TV for 14th century. About 25, she began to experience ecstasies, which continued throughout her life. Well, that's better than not. It is. I, I agree. I 100% go with, I'll take the ecstasy, thank yeah, you, God. Yeah, yeah. She was taken, her spirit was taken to purgatory... Where, this is one of the examples where she would see the suffering oh, okay. of souls, including yeah. some of her friends. Oh, 
But it said she accepted all these ailments with great love for God and offered them up for the conversion of sinners and for the souls in purgatory. So her suffering was in some sense helpful to them. Oh, man. I suffer a lot, therefore you yeah, in purgatory, yeah, 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 etc., yeah, yeah. will be helped. And, of course, some folks assumed she was actually possessed by demons because, you know, you're going to be suspicious and jealous of someone in that position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, oh, well, well that's the thing. you faking you, bitch. You can't tell it, what God would do and what the devil would do. It's true. It's weird. Well, they worked it out. So at some point her local priest brought what they called an unconsecrated host, I assume like a shitty bit of bread. See said, if it'll turn it into. Eat that, and she went, no, nah, that's oh, a fake. That's not, that's not I consecrated. I can tell. So she's legit holy. Fuck that is science. This is how this is how this is a science we did a podcast. Test. We did a religious test. <laughs> Where's your control? She's got twenty bits of yep. bits of bread. Some have been consecrated. Consecrated or not. not? Consecrated or not? Consecrated or not? <laughs> yeah. Blind tasting of consecrated bread. Well, she was basically blind. So that's, that's that's cold, man. No, I didn't that's mean cold. it that way. That is cold. So many miracles apparently took place at her bedside, and she gained a reputation as a healer and a holy woman. Oh, yeah. well, what else are you going to do? You're in the local village or whatever, and you're like, yeah. "Oh fuck, I've broken my leg again." And then, let's really let's go smell the smell the, the sweet, bone thrower up. A th- yeah, let's see what she sheds today. It couldn't hurt, no. And, but also, it's a great excuse. It's a great excuse. It's like, "Fuck, she's got to be gross." Let's go and see. Oh, and uh, oh. Gary, could you just fake an illness and pretend you need some healing? And whoa, there you go. And at least we get to visit her. She probably likes visitors. Exactly. That doesn't come up, but she And may, And, and she again, no one's got TV. So no one. her visions are probably better than anything. So um, She was also, uh, quote, credited with many acts of curing and charity, providing abundant food and nourishment to the needy that miraculously multiplied or lasted longer than expected. Oh, cool. Fuck knows how that worked. I have no idea. That's just a comment that no, was made No, but sometimes you make a dinner that lasts longer than you expect. That's true. You like, freeze it. You, no, no. Well, you yeah, pat yeah. it out. You pat it out. So you got your meatloaf and you add cornflakes and yeah. then it seems like everyone's eating meat for longer. Or sometimes you're just not quite as hungry. Like you eat, eat a bit That's more true. cheese and and beforehand oh, and, and you just go, normally this dinner I'd finish it all, but now I'm, I'm so not I'm all not the way through. To, yeah. It must be a miracle. I had three beers before and I'm a bit full. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This so is going to last until tomorrow. The miracle of the beers beforehand. Yeah, my full tum-tum. By the age of 40, apparently she was happy and, and <laughs> well, she was happy. 40. By 40, yeah. She was happy to be able to receive the communion at least a number of times a week. So by that I'm thinking what they mean is eat a meal because that was the Eucharist. Yeah, uh, but but someone comes to her. She's not going yeah, yeah, to yeah, church. Yeah, the priest yeah. comes to her. No, oh no, she's not leaving. And, and g- during her last few years, she could not move anything except her head and her left arm, and she always had to lie on her back. Oh, my God. The human body, though. It's a miracle, isn't it? Like, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. So at some point in her life, it's not really clear when, but at some point she was shown a vision of a rose bush, mm-hmm. and she was told, when this shall be in bloom, your suffering will be at an end. Ah. Oh. So it's the spring of the year 1433, and apparently she exclaimed- 1433? Yeah, Did so we start she, in 13? 1380. So she's okay. 52, 53. Okay. She apparently cries out, I see the rose bush in full bloom. Yeah, that's what Macbeth said as well. He did. Yeah. But his suffering was not at an end. How, however, hers apparently would be. So on the morning of Easter day, which she was apparently in deep contemplation, and she beheld in a vision Christ coming towards her to administer the sacrament of extreme unction. I'm not getting, just some everyday unction. No, it's fully no fear. He's got his sunglasses on. He's, he's, he's fully yep. sick. He's like, I'm going to extremely unction you. And she died in the odour of great sanctity. <laughs> not my words. So basically from 15 to 53, she suffered every imaginable pain. She was one sore from head to foot and greatly <laughs> emaciated. What a life. <laughs> Why the fuck am I talking to you about her? It's a question. Well, she was beatified or canonized, not just for the patron saint of ice skating, but also the patron saint of, depending on who you read, chronically ill or people in chronic pain. Oh. But the real reason she came to my attention was because she thought to have been one of, if not the first documented case of multiple sclerosis. What? I know. Huh. Enter science and medicine. Historical texts, they list this string of maladies and problems that she had going on and has heaps in common with a lot of the characteristics of multiple sclerosis. So when it came on, so mid-teens, okay. how yep. long it lasted, okay, for fucking ever, and the yep. kind of the course and nature of much of the disease, paralysis, the eye problems, etc. Okay. very ms So she may have actually been the first example that's been recorded. So when you add these, the, the posthumous diagnosis of MS, relatively plausible, so maybe it's been recorded since the 14th century. And at least one source from the Acta Neurologica Scandinavia, so actual science source, does the history of multiple sclerosis go back as far as the 14th century? 
And the quote is, a number of documents written before or shortly after her death surprised us by their very accurate description of symptoms, which now for the most part correspond to the clinical criteria for the diagnosis of MS. This was in the 70s. Of course, there are people who argue, they say, that's bullshit. Like there's a, a very big wig Canadian neurologist, a guy called Thomas Jock Murray. And he's like, nah, enthusiastic, exaggerated reports and myth building by those who revered her in her saintliness. They made it. Sure, sure. They got a bit carried. <clears throat> Could be either way. But it's there, there are many sources that suggest that maybe this was like the first account of MS. So, so just to confirm, uh, MS, like a neurodegenerative sort of mm. condition, it's about, mm. it's about nerves. Yeah. Th- th- there's no reason to suggest that it probably hasn't always been around. It's not like some sort of disease that it's has not, emerged recently or anything. No, apparently not. It's, it's not clear whether it has been around forever, but not really documented. Credible I, accounts. I, I, I get that. Yeah. But, but, but what we're yeah. saying. It may have been around forever, but may have been but, around forever. But we haven't. Yep. It's not like one of those yep. things that just emerged. And the suspicion is, when you go back and read through it, is maybe she fell over because she was starting to get these these paralysis or, yeah. or you know issues. It's the reason. She I think I think it's a fascinating thing to be a, to to think about conditions that uh, that you know we've lived through and we have so much better documentation mm. now to go back and go. Okay, so what, what might they look like in in yeah. early literature where they're looking for different things? So it's tricky, but I mean, I, I'm not going to go into this because there's no point, but there, there's a whole bunch of stuff about her canonization, different churches, bits of her body being, you know, relics of saints, yeah, et cetera. Yeah, of as, as you know, who doesn't want to keep a bit? Exactly. It's a bit of a spew. I got some bones here. This is the inside of her finger. She spewed it backwards. So morals of the story for me, historical times with lists of symptoms may be open to a hint of interpretation, but they could also be indicators of, you know, what's, yep. what's going on. You don't really have to work very hard for medicine to reduce any spiritual experience to a disease state. Yeah, okay. We're good at that. Yep. But more to the point, there's a patron saint of literally fucking everything. For example, I'll give you three more. St. Drausinius, who's the patron saint of invincible people. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big call. Big call. Why the fuck do they need one? Well- They'd like one. Like it's what? like no, it's a mascot for them. Like I'm invincible. Come here, champ. So I need a mascot. Oh, look at you. Saint. You're a saint, are you? Aren't you adorable? <laughs> it's it just cracks me up. And I mean, I've verified Invinci- this. Invincible. I always assumed invincible was a word invented by the comic books. Like it's like you get to comic books 1930, and it's like yeah. okay, we need invincible as a term. Cannot be vinced. I didn't think the Catholic Church would be like we need some. We need invincible as a thing. Well, it's fair to say I'm reading modern sources of uh, stories about okay. such All folks, right. so yeah. maybe the language is different. Saint Genesius, which sounds like a Star Wars villain, patron saint of. Actors, lawyers, barristers, clowns, comedians, converts, dancers, people with epilepsy, musicians, printers, stenographers, and victims of torture. <laughs> what are you fucking talking about? <laughs> stenographers is already funny. Not not the profession. I really admire the profession of stenography, but victims of torture on the list of actors, lawyers, barristers, clowns, comedians, converts, whatever that is, dancers, people with epilepsy, musicians, printers. I want to be taken seriously. Like I want my patron saint to be focused on me and not also talking to a clown. Like I, I, <laughs> I like I, I want you. I'm being tortured here, buddy. Like don't don't. I don't mean to be offensive, but were you just talking to a clown? Would you, I mean really? Like like don't care about a clown if you're caring about torture people. I'm sorry. I'm. I, <laughs> Who are we to question the the focus of the saints? Yeah, I get it. Finally, Saint Isidore, appointed by uh, John Paul II. Okay, a recent one. Patron saint of computers and the internet. (laughs) Computers and the internet. Ah, I logged on. (laughs) Like, what did you do? I was so good at my tweets. I I was the greatest troll ever. Yeah. Like, how are you the patron saint? Or you, you, why do you a troll to death? There is information and things involved. So basically I'd like to say now, I think, we have new spiritual sponsors. The Wholesome Show's new spiritual sponsors. Which one? St. Isidore, of course, because of the internet and stuff. Oh, yeah. With the assist of St. Lawrence and St. Genesius. Comedians? Comedians and, of course... Uh, where's science? Clowns, comedians... Com- uh, fuck science. We don't do science. So, oh, my God. Science is in the background. Oh, my God. So there you go. Saints, multiple sclerosis. We now have religious backing. You're welcome. Welcome.